Once again, I'm, I'm missing Pat. Uh, it's difficult for me to introduce Karen in the way that Pat would have. Uh, they've uh, known each other for a long time. But, uh, and I've- She has lots of jokes that she can tell about. She does, and I've heard some of them. <laughs> Uh, but her, uh, Pat's warmth uh, is hard to duplicate. And this sounds so formal compared to what Pat would say about you, Karen, but I work with, very closely with Pat and have for uh, about eight years, and I hear about Karen Messing all the time. Karen Messing chairs the Gender and Work Technical Committee of the International Ergonomics Association. She's a retired professor of ergonomics and continues to do research on the application of gender sensitive analysis in occupational health and constraints and demands of work in the service sector, especially in prolonged static standing. Dr. Messing is active in a research partnership with three Quebec unions oriented toward improving women's occupational health. She's the author of countless, and I mean, I said 110, and she kind of gave me a look. I don't think that's enough. Peer-reviewed articles of the very well-known book that explains why research has ignored the occupational health and safety of women workers called One-Eyed Science, Occupational Health and Working Women, and with Oslin of the World Health Organization's 2006 Gender Equality, Work and Health, a review of the evidence. She's asked me to say that her work is very much influenced by the double ghetto, Pat Armstrong's classic, and uh, I think perhaps the mutual admiration should be acknowledged here. Karen. So I want to acknowledge my collaborators. The, the work that I'm going to be talking about has been done in collaboration with uh, Anna Maria Seifert, particularly, and also uh, Jessica Riel, who is a student, and uh, Céline Chatney. Um, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, because uh, other people have talked about these authors. Uh, there is a bill growing evidence base uh, for the importance of uh, the workplace for both physical and mental health. Uh, I do want to point out some emerging issues um, because we've we've had the Karasek and Theorel model around for a while, uh, talking about job demand, job control, and social support, and also the Segris model. Uh, of uh, the importance of recognizing people's jobs, and those have been dealt with, I think, today. And some of the issues that uh, the people in Pat's group have been bringing up are issues of organizational justice uh, and uh, congruence between work and a, and a person's values, which are, are emerging issues and very, very important in healthcare. And another issue that there's been relatively little work on, although there was a special attention to the February 2010 issue of American Journal of Industrial Medicine, which is entirely on occupational health disparities and um, the effects of discrimination on uh, occupational health. Uh, in Quebec, we're as badly off as, as everybody is in the rest of Canada, and uh, so I'm just uh, quoting some of Rene uh, Bourbonnais' work, but there's lots more showing that there is a very high rate of di psychological uh, distress in healthcare, uh, home healthcare even more so, as uh, I'm sure Margaret will bear me out in this. And, and um, the results of this um, psychological assault on healthcare workers are lo uh, loss of social support, reactions of distrust and withdrawal, reduced feelings of belonging, feeling of always being under pressure, and disruption of work is one of the things that has emerged from uh, those large-scale surveys that uh, Rene Bourbonnet does. Uh, I want to talk about uh, t the importance of teamwork. That's going to be the theme of uh, the rest of the talk because I think that one of the things, um, and we were just talking with Ben Amick about this, that you need to make the business case for um, not make, making people crazy at work. Uh, and if you want to make the business case, one of the things you can, you can say is that it would be a really good idea uh, to not to destroy teamwork in your organization because 
uh, by destroying teams, you uh, really, really affect productivity. And so that's what I'm going to be mostly talking about. And the kind of, um, we do do quantitative research. I'm not going to be reporting on any of it. Uh, but we do do what's called francophone ergonomic analysis. And it's a kind of analysis that was developed in France. I'm not going to teach a course on it, but we have an article that kind of explains it that I can refer you to. But what it is is, is that we put a lot of emphasis on being in the workplace and watching work for about 100 hours per study. And then giving, it's a kind of qualitative analysis. I call it qualitative analysis using numbers, um, It's uh, which where our conclusions are uh, reported to the workplace and then validated, validated through interviews and discussions with both managers and employees. And it's a, a kind of analysis that is directly geared towards suggesting solutions. And we do this, as uh, Susan mentioned, in a formal partnership with Quebec's three major trade union confederations. And it's been, uh, we've been doing this for, for the last uh, uh, 17 years, I guess, been a while. And those those people that um, are, I put that photograph down in the lower left-hand corner because it's the three heads of the three trade unions sitting actually together and not hitting or beating on each other, and it's kind of a historic moment. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, so teamwork. Well, the first time we, we kind of thought about it, and it was Anna Maria Seifert who's pretty much specialized in this since, is that we, uh, I was listening to a bunch of bank tellers talking on Friday afternoon, and one of them said to the, uh, to the other, um, I'm going to be all alone on Monday. And I thought, oh my goodness, it's only one teller. And she said, no, 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 there's going to be six people, but I'm going to be all alone. And when we talked about it, I realized that it was because they had shared out the work in the group informally. And she knew s some specific things, but the people who knew the complementary things weren't going to be there on Monday. And that the whole way that the schedule was set up, nobody had thought to take into account this kind of informal um, knowledge um, apportionment in, in the banks when they did the schedule. So that was my first contact with how informal um, teamwork is really, really important and that the employer may not know about it. Um, and so we studied this formally. This was, uh, again, Anna Maria studied it formally among nurses, in, and uh, this was published in uh, 2004, but I'm going to give you some of the major um, results just in case you don't read every single thing we ever write. Um, so this is uh, nurses uh, on wards, and this is a quotation from a nurse uh, who's just explaining how the teamwork works. We, um, that because we're often in contact, I'll ask my, my colleague, where are you? And she'll say, I've done uh, two, I've got two people left. And, uh, and sh if she doesn't have time to do it, then I'll go and do it because I have a bit of time and I'll help her and she'll do the same for me. So, uh, but this again is something that is uh, informal and not visible. Um, we went and looked at the staffing situation on the ward that that nurse was from. And the first thing we noticed was that there weren't very many people around. And there, uh, what was quite strange to us was that the head of the, um, of the ward, the nursing uh, infirmier chef, uh, the head nurse, um, she thought there were three people on uh, during the day shift and three people on the evening shift, two people on the night shift, and another person who was the assistant uh, head nurse who was on five days a week. So that adds up to 264 people per month that worked on her ward, that, that people shifts, if you like, that were worked on her ward. I, I don't know if that's clear. Okay, that's this figure of 264. But when we got, so we got the, um, the staffing sheets to see who had actually worked on the wards. And the first thing we noticed was that there hadn't been 264 people shifts. There were only 221. So that's uh, quite a significant understaffing, even compared to the lousy levels of staffing that they thought they had. And the other thing is that she thought that there were uh, 10 full-time people working on her ward. But the month that we studied it anyway, which was there was no reason to suppose it was going to be atypical, there were only three people that actually worked 16 or more shifts during that month. And that the part-time and casual was way, way up. Okay. 
The, we further looked at the, at the figures, the numbers of this, and this is why we call it uh, qualitative research using numbers, is that 53% of the shifts were worked by a nurse who had not been on the ward the previous day. And in more, more than half of those, the nurse would not return the following day. Okay, so there were more than a quarter of, of shifts that were just the person comes in for one day and then they're gone. And the chance of the patient who had Linda for a nurse on Monday, on Monday morning, having Linda for a nurse on Tuesday morning was less than 10%. Okay. So this obviously affects patient care, but it also affects continuity of care, and it affects the proportion of time, and I'm not going to show you these results, but they are in the article, uh, and the article is actually in English, and, and uh, but the, what this had an effect on also was the content of care. That is, somebody who is spending all her time trying to play catch up and try and figure out how things are done on the ward and where are the bandages and where's the video that you're supposed to show to the patient to show them how to do their bandaging when they, when they get home and is there a video that'll show them that so you don't have to, anyway, all that stuff um, when you are only working an isolated shift, uh, you're, you're lacking you're lacking that, and you're taking up time doing these learning things. So that's one thing that's important about this, which everybody here has been emphasizing, so I'm not going to belabor it. The second thing, though, was the importance of teamwork. That is, even we took a, a particular time when there was actually a fair amount of continuity. Now, what this uh, little diagram is, is that A is one person, B is one person, C is one person, and D is one person, okay? So A is Annie, B is Betsy, C is Carol, D is uh, Denise, okay? And, uh, and the, so on day one, we had four different people working in the morning, four different nurses working in the morning and evening shift. Um, day two, uh, we had E and F are two new people. C is back, and we've got another person, G, in the evening. So is that, is that clear what this diagram is? Okay. So if you look at it, you're going to see that, this, that even though there's a certain amount of continuity among the, the individuals that are there, the actual teams are uh, almost never, there are only two team, three teams that you see that are, and they, don't, they only recur once. So we have C working with D, D on day one in the evening, and day five in the evening we have C working with I on days three and four, and we have K working with B on day six and seven in the morning. Um, but, but the teams are just constantly being uh, res rescheduled, reshuffled. And that really affects the ability of people to work together. Because I've been on wards where I'm watching, I'm observing a nurse, and I'm not no, I don't notice anything, but all of a sudden the nurse drops everything and rushes into another room. And I follow and I find out that the, person, the nurse in the other room is being attacked by a patient. But I didn't notice that. But the, the nurse I'm watching did notice it because she had little, she was always aware of that person, where that person was, what that person was doing, who was the patient that that person was with, okay? Because she was able to get that knowledge through working in, team, in a team with that person. But you can't do it if you don't have a constant team. <laughs>